Welcome to the second part of my year end. Today we are going to look at my 50 favorite songs of the year 2021. This year in terms of singles has been amazing. Not all of these are singles but I've tried to keep it so so that if I like a deep cut on a project but there's a single that I like as much I will favor the single. However, I have put in my fair share of deep cuts that you will see later. But first, a few things. First thing, you're not gonna see a worst uh, list this year, but if you're wondering what my least favorite song of the year was, it's way too sexy and it isn't even close. Like, my God, I violently hate that song. Please, I, I, it gets stuck in my head and I never wanna hear it again. And the second thing is, a quick honorable mention. This song would have been in my top three, but in the end, I decided not to count it. And that is the 10 minute version of Taylor Swift's All Too Well. This song is in almost all aspects perfect. I think it produced well. The lyrics are obviously really heartbreaking. The instrumentation's great. The performance itself is really good. It's arguably the best thing Taylor's ever done. But I chose not to include it on the pure reason that it's an extended version. And I think that counts out. Like, including that means I'd have to remove some things and maybe favor some things. Like, I'd have to put something on Jeff Rosenstock's Scar Dream, for an example, which you won't see in either of the best lists, as in my opinion, both are just variations on things that already exist. But let's start the list from number 50 to number 26. I'm only going to give minor descriptions so that this video does not become 30 minutes long. With that, we start with number 50 with Slow by Black Midi. Um, one sentence being, this is one of the weirdest bangers of the year. And really, I like this song, like this project was not about the individual songs, but I had to pick one just to resemble how much I love this project. Next, we have the opener by Kulnis, a 10 minute indie rock opus from an underground project is not really what you expect. And this is exactly what I asked for. Next at number 48, we have Working for the Knife by Mitski. This was a really good return to form for Mitski, who is an artist I really enjoy. Next, we have 47 Savage by Ayesfa. I'm not a massive K-pop fan, and I really like this. Please check it out. And number 46, we have Coloratura by Coldplay, which has been honored as one of their better songs of the past few years, which I am inclined to agree with. After that, we have Chief Keef with The Talk. Really, all I need to say is that Chief Keef is back. What a banger. Next, we have... Uh, an underrated song from this year and an underrated project this year and that is Law of Averages by Vince Staples. After that we have the return of one internet man Travis Miller, Lil Ugly Man, with something very similar to his Bedwetter project in Headboard. After that we have Insomnia which is actually off the downfall of the Neon Youth project and this one was performed by Paranool. And I really like this. It was a hard pick between this and Beautiful World of their uh, individual project to see the next part of the dream. After this, we have Slugger by Kevin Abstract featuring Slow Tie and Snot. If you ask me to name three random rappers, these are probably the three I'd come up with. And uh, it somehow is one of the best bangers of the year. After that, we have Walking at a Downtown Pace by Parquet Coats. I didn't like this project as much as I did Wide Awake, but this is just perfect. What an intro. It's such groovy music and I really liked it. After that, we have RXK Nephew with Dark Noise. We somehow have two Chief Keefs on this list and I genuinely think this is the better one. Genuinely listen to it. And after that, we have Modern Guy from Death From Above 1979. One of the best bass riffs of the year and I will put that out as a hot take as well. After that, number 37, we have Moments by Nas. A perfect representation of Nas' storytelling over the years. And it's just a great centerpiece of what was a great project 
from the legendary New York rapper this year. And after that, we have The Gnashing by Deaf Heaven. It was hard to pick an individual song on this cause of how much the project flows into each other, but I did choose this one purely because of how immense the sound is of this. Next, we have Paprika by Japanese Breakfast, which I'm starting to contemplate I may like this much purely because it sounds a lot like Kamikaze by Suzanne Sunfo, but I couldn't care with those horns, man. They're really good. After that, we have Rico Nasty and Flo Millie coming together with one of the bangers of the year with money. And after that, we have the Burbs with the opening track to their race relations opus, uh, Transparency, off of Not To Be Reproduced. And after that, we have Born In Luton by Shame. Shame just make really good punk music, man. And this is a perfect representation of the project. And number 31, we have The Killers and Phoebe Bridgers working together in something that should not work, and it does, on Runaway Horses, which is just a beautiful piece of Americana folk. And after that, at number 30, we have I Tried by Slow Tie, the turning point to his opus, Tyron. After that, we have Blackout by Turnstile, a very simple, very hardcore riff, and a great representation, again, of a brilliant punk project from this year. Next, at number 28, Five Year Foreign continues his insane hot streak on story time. Number 27, we have Me 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 by 100 Gex, which really symbolizes a whole new era for 100 Gex with less produced vocals and a really personal take, which I am all for. And finally, at number 26, we have Falling Out the Sky. Now, let's move to the individual songs, starting with number 25, uh, the orchestral rock opus of OK Human, which was a project from earlier this year that I almost forgot about, but I never forgot about this song, and that being the audible ad, Grapes of Wrath by Weezer. Number 24, Brockhampton and Danny Brown sounds like something that would really work, and it's better than you can imagine on the song Buzz Cut, and at number 23, we have Imperfect Things by Mono. This was a project that I checked out out of absolutely nowhere. And this song really blew me away. Those synths and that synth line that just continues throughout the entire album and that entire song, that was really impressive. I really liked how it built and it built and it built. The guitar comes in, the drum comes in, and it just all makes just some really, really nice progressive metal. After that, we have Industry Baby with Lil Nas X and Jack Harlow. A great music video, great song, great feature from Jack Harlow. Just everything about this song just screams banger. And I really love the production. Uh, Day Trip and Kanye West really do some good work here. We finally have at number 21, Princess and the Clock by Caro Caro Benito, which was a great cut of their Civilization 2, which is something I would really like to acknowledge because it probably won't, it won't make my albums list as it technically wasn't an album that was three songs long. But this was my favorite one out of the entire project. It was just some really greatly crafted EDM pop that I really liked. Next we have number 20, Spelling's Boys at School. This was a weird one because I went into this project before Fantano gave it a 10 and liked it. And then I listened to it again after he gave it a 10, and I didn't think it was a 10, but this song has always stuck with me because of that piano. Those That piano sounds perfect, and Spelling gives a great performance in this song. And number 19, we have Hazard Duty Pay by JPEG Mafia. This is one of the most enigmatic songs Peggy has ever made. And yeah, this is a perfect example and a perfect reason why you need to seek out the offline version of LP because it's really good. Number 18, we have Saint Vincent with Pay Your Way in Pain. Just some great like 70s and 80s synths. And it is a perfect vibe that is created with this song. I genuinely probably have listened to this song multiple times. Because this was the leading single, and I really enjoyed this, which led to me enjoying the entire project and my thoughts on it improving throughout the entire year. And number 17, 
we have what in my opinion is one of the most underrated songs of the year and that is the lay down by shelly and her i knew the song was released in 2019 which is why most people are not giving it the attention it needs but let it be known this song is amazing it sounds perfect andrew ward gives an amazing solo on it seek it out it's amazing number 16 we have poppy with Say Cheese, which is this brilliant like alternative metal. And I really like this direction for Poppy. It makes perfect sense uh, because I definitely heard her sort of influences on that Bring Me The Horizon project that I really enjoyed from 2020. And this is just her screaming for like three minutes straight. And then there's a jazz break in the middle and I, I lost it when I heard the jazz break and that was my favorite moments of the year. But yeah, Poppy just continues her mean streak. And a, a pretty good project after this. Though I would have hoped it sounded way more like this. And number 15, we have The Weeknd with Take My Breath. Uh, the Weeknd did not really drop any project this year except for this single and a few single releases off of After Hours. But this was really good. It saw him going even deeper into that 80s synth pop we were talking about on After Hours. And I really like it. I really like the stone for his sound, especially me being as much of a Weekend fan as I am. Hearing him take the stone for the, is really for the better. I really like the sort of Michael Jackson vibe he's going for. And number 14, we have the rock band out of Niger, Umdu Mokhtar with Chismite which is the grooviest song of the year. I love the guitar tone on this, man. It is probably tone of the year. And I definitely want to see if I can create it in any sort of way. A great riff, great driving, like rhythm. Uh, the lyrics I obviously can't decipher, but it's delivered in such an enigmatic way, where in my opinion, it doesn't really matter. If you haven't listened to it, seek it out. At number 13, we have Backwash with I Lie Here Buried With My Rings and Dresses. What a primal song. This feels like some sort of rage that is inside her and it's just like coming out Millhouse. Like it's really good. It's really like attacking you. It's like challenging you and it is so good. Like a brilliant banger of the year. And number 12, we have Tyler the Creator with Lil Uzi Boat and Pharrell Williams with Juggernaut. I really struggled with a single song off of uh, Call Me If You Get Lost, one of the best albums of the year. However, I chose this one and not Sweet because this is just banger, man. Like Lil Uzi, great verse, Pharrell, great verse. Tyler obviously doing that turnaround and then immediately going into what might just be the hardest beat of the year. Yeah, just just magical work from a person who just continues to be on the hottest streak of almost any artist in history. And number 11, I never would have expected an artist like this person to reach anywhere close to my top 10. And very sadly, he missed out on the top 10 until the last month. And that is Sisyphus by Quedeca. I really do not like Quedeca's music. Like, I, in his past, like, I've been okay with it. But this, this is what we call career-defining stuff. And that is what Quedeca does in this song. Best production of the year, by far. And it's done by one person. It's insane how good this song is. It has no right to be. And yeah, it's just one of the best songs of the year. And number 10, we have Kendrick Lamar and Baby Keem collaborating together, like the cousins they are, on Family Ties. Cause yeah, this is, this is just great. This, I really like the rise of Baby Keem, man. I listened to this guy in like 2019, 2018, even before uh, it was publicly known that he was Kendrick's cousin. And this is exactly the music I want to hear him on. This is exactly the beat I want to hear him just ride and show his personality over. If you're not on the Baby Keem uh, right, right now, 
I don't think he will ever be, because this is, we're looking at the next big star in rap. At number nine, we have Sufjan Stevens and Angela de Augustin with Back to Oz. Again, just, Sufjan manages to blow me away with almost everything he does. I didn't really like Meditations, but this was exactly up my street. Like this really calling back to his Illinois days and his Michigan days. And this is exactly, this the topic is also really cool. Like him talking about the movie Back to Oz and him and Angelo having this sort of, you can understand where one ends and where one doesn't, but it's so soothing. And then that guitar solo comes in and you're just like, how in the world? This is a Sufjan Stevens song and he's, Ripping out a guitar solo, that's really cool. And number eight, we have Taylor Swift and Phoebe Bridgers with Nothing New. Another really good song. This is basically a Phoebe Bridgers song with Taylor Swift on it. But I'm a massive Phoebe Bridgers fan and this is as good as I thought this collaboration could be. This was really good. I really hope that we get to see more of Taylor working with artists like Phoebe, like I would really love to see her work with the Lucy Dacus. But this was exactly what I wanted out of my albums and out of my songs this year. And at number seven, we have the only 2021 song that appeared on my Spotify wrapped. And that was uh, Headshots for the Locals by Isaiah Rashad. Just again, just relaxing. Like I hear this song and I think banger. But I also think just how enigmatic the production is and how it just like lets you in. And I think the song improves. That saxophone comes in in like the final 20 seconds. And it's just like it's slow, it's soft. It's like you're like moshing in your head. But in reality, like you're just closing your eyes and you're like, yeah, this is the vibe. This is the, this is the vibe I want this year. And now we move on to number six. At number six, I have Heart Attack by Dave, which is one of the most heartbreaking songs I've heard this year because Dave has his way with words sometimes. Sometimes he has his duds, let's be honest. There's the reason why this one is here and not 20 to one, which I think is a better song, but gets kind of ruined by the whole Pokemon line. <laughs> but this, is what we call magnum opuses. This is a magnum opus. Nine minutes of Dave just going on what basically is a rant about the state of UK crime and him just showing a narrative that has never been seen. And then like for one and a half minutes and two minutes, he just cuts the beat and it's just him. And it is the most impressive lyrical flex thing I've ever seen. At number five, we have Silk Sonic with Put On A Smile, which again, this one was a surprise, man. Came out of left field. This is the thing that knocked out Kodaka because I genuinely think this song is perfect because it goes through so many fair phases, man. Bruno does well, Anderson Park does well. That final minute where he just builds and builds and builds and that key change happens and then everything meets in paradise is just impressive. And I really love the lyrics on this as well because it is really sad, but then it's so in line with the characters they're playing on this album because he even stops to say like, hey, if I could turn the hands of my Rolex, then we'd be back together. And it's still so braggadocious and I, and I love it. I, I love everything about this song. And at number four, we have Little Sims with the intro to her album, Sometimes I Might Be Introvert, Introvert, which is this impressive. The fact that Dave's Heart Attack was not the best UK rap song this year just proves how great of a year this has been for music. Man, Simbi just goes at it. She continues to impress me with how lyrically great she is. She's probably the best lyricist in rap right now, 
male or female definitely up there in that conversation and this just is a perfect example and it's her going through again another massive tale that she's just very infamous for like showing these really impressive soundscapes and stories to her fans and this is exactly what i expected at number 3 i have the posthumous single from mac miller yeah mac miller is one of my favorites of all time he just is uh especially throughout this last year i've been realizing just how much he's affected my life and this is exactly what i wanted faces came out and then this came as a bonus track and it sounds like a james bond theme and it's so perfect like it blew my mind how perfect it was on my first listen and i will continue to listen to this song and cherish it because it's so harsh especially listening to it after his death when he says lines like am i alive am i aware on that chorus and yeah the live instrumentation as well that was a perfect addition at number 2 we have kanye west and andre 3000 the song life of the party which might just be andre's best feature was like for me the goat debate was kind of hard until i heard this verse when i was just like yeah it's it's andre and it is nemi close like obviously kanye's verse was good kanye's verse is really good if i'll add but the two defining factors of this are that andre 3000 verse that everyone's been talking about cuz it's practically perfect it's lyrically perfect it's flow wise perfect it's it's like just the most perfect verse ever written and that outro with a uh, dmx and his daughter now i listened to the leak of this before the actual song came out and i'll be honest that that last part with dmx nearly made me cry because that is that is the perfect amount of emotion that he's talking about especially with the dynamic of this being this album being about kanye's mother and her passing and i think that fit the theme perfectly but even as an individual song this is just as perfect as you can get from kanye west and at number 1 we have another tribute to a dead person my favorite song of the year is a song i haven't actually listened to a lot because i haven't brought myself to listen to it much and that is injury reserve with the song knees the first single after the tragic death of one step aj grogs who was the second rapper alongside richie and this one this one hit me man this is exactly the tribute uh step aj wanted man a, a weird song this is really weird like it feels so soothing yet in reality the lyrics are so dark like they're unbelievably dark and it's just them going together and richie just re- reminiscing and the, probably the best video of the year as well and again you just don't find songs this perfect especially in a year with these many songs that were perfect this was a whole other level of perfect this was like a proper tribute to a person like this is the closest thing i can compare to as like shine on you because it's a proper tribute like it's a full tribute they're not tributing just the highs they're tributing everything about stepa and this was exactly the song that was needed in 2021 and that was the list i hope you enjoyed it i sorry i'm sorry to end it on such a down note but join me tomorrow for my 50 arms of the years where i will elaborate way more thanks for watching peace